Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so in this video, I'm going to introduce Euler substitutions for integration. Now, if you have an integral that involves the square root of um, ax squared plus bx plus c, then there are three different Euler substitutions that you can make that allow you to get rid of the square root. First thing first, if b is equal to zero, then you use trig substitution, trigonometric substitutions, right? And I have many videos on those. But yeah, assuming that b is not equal to zero, then we use one of three Euler substitutions. Of course, we have to assume that a is not equal to zero, because if a is equal to zero, then you just have a simple linear inside the square root, and you can do basic substitution, aka u substitution, right? Okay, cool. Now. Uh, as this is example zero, we're just going to big picture understand why these three Euler substitutions are useful. In subsequent examples, uh, one, two, three, and maybe additional examples, we're going to see um, these Euler substitutions in action. We're going to see them in action here also, but um, obviously not with numbers, big picture. Okay, so the first Euler substitution is first. Uh, Euler sub, uh, sorry guys, uh, is this. It is to let, it is to let the square root of, um, sorry guys, Jesus. You let the square root of ax squared plus bx um, plus c equal, let it equal, um, let it equal x root a plus t. Now, it might not be immediately clear why this is helpful, but look, if we square both sides, then first we get, um, first we get this, which is on the left we get uh, ax squared plus, on the right we get ax squared plus 2xt root a plus t squared, right? Okay, and clearly I can get rid of ax squared here and here, right? And so I'll have that. And if I collect terms that have x in them, then next I could write uh, bx minus 2xt root a is equal to t squared uh, minus c, like that, right? Okay, and then next I could factor out an x from the left side and write that what I have is the same as x times b minus 2t root a equals uh, t squared minus c. Okay, so uh, then we could divide by this on both sides to write that x is equal to, x is equal to t squared minus c uh, divided by b minus 2t root a. Now, remember, we said that your integral involves this guy, right? Um, and let's call this guy f of x. And it is a function of x, right? So what you have to start is like something like just f of x dx or 1 over f of x dx, something that involves f of x, right? And so what you said is, um, let's say it's simply f of x dx. What you've said is that this is equal to um, x, x root a, x root a, plus t dx, right? Because f of x, the square root quantity, is equal to this. That's what we said to start, right? Okay, but then now we have completely solved for x all in terms of t. Look at that, what I boxed. That's all in terms of t. So when you substitute this x with this here, then in this part, in the parentheses, you'll have stuff that only involves t. And of course, dx, Right, dx, if x is equal to what I boxed, right, if x is equal to what I boxed, then dx is simply d dt of the box stuff. But the derivative of the box stuff is all in terms of t, meaning your integral is now all in terms of t, and it does not involve the square root of a quadratic, which is what you had to start. So you see why other substitutions are helpful? So yeah. Um, the other substitutions, uh, the, the mechanics is slightly different and obviously the algebra, right? But um, what, what purpose it serves is still the same, which is in the end, 
uh, it's to turn uh, the integral from x to t or whatever other, other variable you choose to use in place of uh, what I've called t and um, more importantly to get rid of the square root right so uh, the goal with the other substitutions is the same it's just that uh, the other substitutions uh, involve slightly different assumptions because here what we assumed is that a is greater than zero so uh, let's look at the second order sub okay Jesus I never know where, like my racers and stuff are but whatever um, so second Euler sub All right so uh, in the second Euler sub uh, again we want to work on some integral that involves root ax squared plus bx plus c uh, dx say something like that uh, but this time our substitution is going to be that uh, root uh, root uh, ax squared plus bx plus c be equal to be equal to uh, x minus alpha times t and I'll explain uh, under the assumption remember our um, first Euler substitution assumed that a is greater than zero and so here our assumption is that um, ax squared plus bx plus c has two distinct roots and one of them is alpha so our assumption is that this quadratic uh, can be written in the form a times x minus alpha uh, times x minus beta where it's, its other root is beta and beta is different from alpha yeah okay so under that condition which is you have uh, a factorable quadratic or at least a quadratic that not necessarily factorable but that leads to two distinct zeros then you make this substitution. Okay, why is this substitution helpful? Well, just as we did before, let's square both sides. When we do, we'll be able to get rid of the square root here, and here we get that squared and that squared, right? Okay, and then next we could write ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to, uh, well, what is it equal to? What did we assume about this? It's equal to this, but you know that we can see from the previous line what we assumed is that this here is equal to that there so in place of this I could write uh, I could write a times x minus alpha times x minus beta is equal to and then it's x minus alpha squared t squared okay and then next I could divide both sides by x minus alpha and when I do I'm gonna get on the left, I'm going to get uh, a times uh, x minus beta. And then on the right, one of the x minus alpha factors is gone. Right? OK. And so now I get uh, ax minus a beta is equal to x t squared minus um, alpha t squared. Right? And if I collect items that have x's in them, then I get ax minus x t squared equals um, a beta uh, minus alpha t squared all right and obviously factor out an x from the left so x times uh, a minus t squared is what we'd get and so clearly x is going to be uh, divide both sides by a minus t squared all right so uh, this what I just wrote is equal to x, right? Okay. Why is this helpful? Well, all right. Need I remind you? Okay, I'm not gonna say it all over again. Uh, don't worry. This is f of x. You have f of x dx. My bad. I'm writing casually now. This is f of x, right? Okay. And you've claimed that it's actually uh, the same as um, x minus alpha times t dx right now this x here right is this x here and upon replacing this x by that giant quotient uh, you make at least this part of our integral all about t and upon taking the derivative of both sides here you'll get a replacement for uh, dx that's all in terms of t and therefore this integral is all about t now yeah okay cool 
So uh, finally, the third Euler substitution. And of course, again, uh, it helps us deal with integrals. That was in black, my bad, y'all. Uh, it helps us deal with integrals that involve the same whole square root. And uh, a slightly different assumption for this third Euler substitution. And this is the assumption this time. Our assumption this time for the third uh, Euler sub, our assumption is that C is greater than zero. Yeah, put together all three cases uh, cover uh, all the different possibilities of uh, what could happen with the quadratic. So if C is greater than zero, uh, then what you should do is you should let uh, this here, let it equal xt plus root c. Yeah? Okay, to see why this is helpful, same old game. It's kind of boring at this point, but uh, let's do it very quickly. Yeah? Okay, so you get x squared t squared plus 2xt root c plus c. Now you can cancel c from both sides of this equation, right? And then next, divide both sides by x. And when we divide both sides by x, we're going to get uh, ax plus b is equal to xt squared, uh, and then plus uh, 2t root c. And bring the x's together. So ax minus xt squared equals 2t root c minus b. And finally, factor out an x from the left. And so a minus um, a minus t squared times x is equal to 2t root c minus b. So x is equal to 2t root c minus b divided by a minus t squared. Okay, so you want to know why this helps? <laughs> All right. No, I won't bother. But um, you get it, you get it. But um, uh, what I will say is that when you're doing these Euler substitutions uh, where you actually know A, B, and C, don't uh, reinvent the wheel. If you've watched this video, just save these axes and all the, uh, the different cases and start with that, which is like begin, for example, if C is greater than zero, you choose to do this third Euler substitution, begin by setting X equal to this here where you plug in the known values of A, B, and C into this. Don't reinvent the wheel. Yeah? All right. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this. And like I said, there'll be practical examples one, two, and three, and maybe more. Keep watching. Take care.